Welcome to the module 4.2, Job Searching. In this module, we will explore three ways of searching for your future job. We'll compare their pros and cons and choose the best approach according to your style. There are multiple ways how to secure your new job position. Some are relatively easy and others require a lot more effort. Of course, everything depends on which situation you find yourself in. Let's look at the three most common ways of searching for a job and find out more about how they work. We'll start with the classic active searching. This is obviously the most used way of looking for a job as millions of people search through job portals daily. The offers fluctuate, uh, reacting to many factors like region, political situation, seasonality, demand and others. It's good to choose the right job portal for the work you are searching for. Even though people often start with the biggest one operating in the region, uh, for example Indeed, sometimes it's worth exploring more niche sites as they try to focus on a specific industry or profession, possibly hiding some great offers. The downside of active searching is the ever-growing number of fake offers and scammers. This is usually more visible in regions with denser population. You always need to be careful what information you share and with whom. It is not easy to always spot a shady offer as scammers devise new ways of getting to your professional information every day. Another aspect to consider is a lengthy hiring process. Many big companies rely on intricate behavior-focused hiring procedures to determine whether an applicant is fit for the position and for the co company climate. On top of submitting your resume and punctually adapted motivational letter, you would usually need to go through an exhausting 40 plus minute questionnaire to even qualify for the first round of the interview. In this case, it is useful to consider whether it's worth to invest so much time in uh, that particular position and how probable are you to be successful in getting the actual job. The second and arguably the best way of finding a new job is using networking. With mostly oversaturated job markets, networking creates a special shortcut to shortlist you or even get you the position right away. That's why it's important to make a name for yourself. Things like symposiums, workshops, special projects or startups are ideal for meeting the right people in order to create a connections and sell yourself. Don't miss out on volunteering opportunities or projects that offer communities of practice. Getting yourself in the spotlight tends to attract more offers for a cooperation, contracts or even full-time jobs. When striving for a good networking opportunities, your go-to website should be LinkedIn. The biggest professional social network even offers a lot of help how to find the best way to get known. Whether it's via the official website group, its curated networking cheat sheet, or plethora of extensive networking related blog articles. There are downsides as well, of course. Uh, many times networking is connected to nepotism or conflict of interests. Others might see this sudden circle of luck of yours as something you didn't really deserve. Let's face it. Not many people see all the turmoil of building a successful and well-connected career. Spontaneous applications is the last of our three categories. This term refers to a situation where your chosen organization doesn't advertise the job you seek, however, you approach them anyway. The truth is that spontaneous applications rely heavily on luck. Having no direct competitors is a great advantage. You should prepare each spontaneous application carefully and individually and target a specific job profile as possible. There are basically three main steps when going for a spontaneous application. Start by assessing what you can offer to any employer and what you want to offer. Think about the things that are useful to an employer, may it be your skills or your working style. Look around and scout for some information. You want to find out what opportunities are in your sector, where they are and what are organizations looking for. 
take genuine interest in the companies and the sector, but don't forget to talk to people. Direct contact is the fastest and most reliable way to get where you want to be. However, try not to ask about the job opportunities directly. The last step is to focus on the opportunity. No matter how your conversation went, you can approach the organization with an email. Remember to make it short and to the point. A quick message explaining your interest in the organization, along with five bullet points about you that are relevant to the business, is more than enough. Remember that these people receive dozens of emails daily and prefer to make quick decisions. Now, let's look at some important terms. We'll start with ghosting. It's an unpleasant and very frequent practice in which the job applicant will never hear back from the HR specialist, no matter how intense their conversation was. It can happen in any phase of hiring process. It is usually caused by HR specialist being overwhelmed with work and unable or forbidden by company policy to respond back to everyone. Fake job offers. At first glance, these jobs seem like perfect opportunities offering great salaries and numerous benefits for seemingly no requirements. These job offers usually hide unpleasant surprises. Some of them are pure scams, trying to get as much information out of you and selling them to everyone. Others are in fact posted by genuine organizations, however, they are not really looking for anyone and these offers serve a different purpose. Before you decide to apply for a position, read it thoroughly and investigate the organization before you make a move. Now the time is to sit down and find the answer to some basic questions. It is important to know exactly what position do you plan to take in the organization. That helps you to narrow down the search. There's also a difference between searching for the job online and visiting the local co-working center. It all falls down to what type of organization do you want to work for. Job fairs and various job blogs are some excellent sources of tips and tricks how to write your CV or how to search for the job you want. Invest some time in checking them out. So, after all this, it is important to remember a couple of things. Getting a job is usually a very difficult thing. Markets are oversaturated and companies have unrealistic requirements. However, none of that should stop you. As one famous person said, improvise, adapt, overcome. The word of the day is persistence. Every interview is a unique chance to get the experience that can be used for the next one. Pay close attention to what people ask and how they react to what you say. Eventually, you will be able to use these skills to masterfully present yourself and combine it with what the company is looking for in order to successfully finish the interview. And that's it for this module. Make sure to go through it once more to see if you haven't missed anything. There's still a lot more stuff.